faith. Amen? Amen. It's always good to hear those stories again. I'm not going to be too long. We'll get out really quick. I, I just want to—I do want to share a story with you, so we can get out and have some lunch. Uh, faith. As Rick was preaching and everything, you know, faith is a choice. Faith is a choice. We all have a choice to live in faith or not live in faith. We all have a choice to believe God or not to believe God. It's a choice. And after hearing Rick say all those stories, I was like, wow, we really chose to live by faith. And we still do to this day. And, but just to live them, I like to look back and to see how we had to stand for certain things. It's exciting and it seems like it was impossible. Lots of, mostly everything seemed like it was impossible. But we had faith, we had a word from God and we had faith to believe it and declare it, and we received it. And, but it was a choice. It was a choice. And you know, the dictionary says that faith is complete trust or confidence in something or someone. Complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So after hearing those stories, I was like, well, we really had and have complete trust in confidence yeah. in the word of God yeah. and yeah. what he said yeah. for us. And it, 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 it's, an, it's an exciting life. It's an adventurous life. And you know what? It's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to want to choose to live by faith because you can get the easy way out and just make it, you make it happen. That's the easy way, you know, or make sure all the dots are met and all this and that. There's sometimes we're on dot one and we're like, how we get to, we skip all this and we get to there because we did it by faith. You know, in the middle did not look like it was going to line up, but we chose to live by faith and we still choose to live by faith today. And so faith is a complete trust and confidence in someone or something. So today, we have a choice to have complete confidence and trust in the word and what he has told you. Now, the Bible in, in Hebrews 11, 1 says that now faith is the substance. Yes. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, that's faith. That's how you live by faith. You don't see the end result in the natural, but you see it. In the, in the spirit, and, you, and you come, we get it in the word, and then it comes into our heart. Once you have it in your heart, you're not going to let it go. You it has to get to the heart, because you can say it, you can read it, but it has to get in the heart. And once it's in the heart, you're not going to let it go until you see manifestation of what you're believing for. And you know, when, when I got born again, I heard the preacher preach. I was in a church service. I heard the preacher preach. I heard, so faith came. Yes. Faith came. I believed what he was preaching because it was getting to my heart. The Spirit of God was getting to my heart. And then I confessed with my mouth, and then I received. That's how you receive Jesus, right? That's how I remember receiving Jesus. And that's how you receive everything else. That's how you receive healing, protection, direction, uh, enjoyment. You know, that's funny, but you have to have faith to enjoy life because you can get caught up in doing everything and not enjoying life. So that's one thing that God has told us to do to enjoy life. So we have to, you have to have faith for everything, for health, for children, for protection, for your children's mates, you know, for every, every, think of your life. Like Rick said, them, what do you have to have faith for? It's complete trust and confidence in the word of God. And you know, I'm going to take you back real quick. In 1983, think about 1983. Yes, that's the year I met Rick. That was 1983. Uh, poofy hair was in. Uh, <laughs> poofy hair was in for me. And then back in the day, the hairspray, the, I think the Aquanet, everybody had Aquanet, hairspray teasing. Back in 1983, uh, and also in that time around there, there was Crazy Pants for in. Whoever, you might not know what Crazy Pants are, but they're like baggy pants that are full of neon colors. And that was in back in the day. So 1983, 
That's the year I met Rick. I'm going to say this story because it goes along with a lot of Rick's stories. Now, these are our stories and things that we had to have faith for. Uh, so 1983, I took Rick to his very first West Coast Believers Convention. Yeah. This was my, his first time being introduced to faith this way, the word of faith. So we went to this big arena in Anaheim, the convention center. We, the stage was, like, so this is the stage. We're way on the top, way, way on the top. And I told him the day before, we're going to the West Coast Believers Convention. I'm going with my family. If you want to come, you can come. So he had to miss work to come. I think it was all day we went. So we sat way on the top. This was something he was never introduced to, never seen nothing this big. Yeah. And, you know, to see something that's like, wow, it gets, it gets your faith comes up like, wow. So we're up there on the, on the way on the top. And then Rick says, you know, actually the Spirit of God dropped within his spirit because he was hungry and faith came and he, the Spirit of God said to him, and he said, one day I will work with that man preaching down there. Wow. He didn't even know him, Kenneth Copeland. That was in 1983. Wow. Okay, now faith came. He heard, that, he heard that Spirit of God drop something in him and then the Lord gave me a scripture concerning our part with KCM Ministries, and then our part in Hollywood, because God was calling us also to Hollywood. So in 1983, Faith came for one day to work with KCM Ministries. Okay, but not until, it was 1997. 1997, this is like 14 years later. From 1983, all this way, we have our four kids, we're coming to church, we're doing um, we're youth pastors for like all these years, involved with our church, serving God. Um, the Lord is opening doors for Rick in Hollywood. He starts working in Hollywood for nine years, plus working in um, construction, plus doing ministry, doing whatever we can do to reach out with the youth. So this is all these years, 14 years go by. And then 1997, again, Kenneth Copeland Ministries had a movie department. They made kid movies, they made western movies, I mean they did movies. So Rick is working in Hollywood and because he, know, he knows he's called to the movie industry. So then he finds out there's an opening at Kenneth Copeland Ministries in the movie department. So there were like, Rick's like, wow, maybe this is my opportunity to be a part and work with this ministry that I heard back in 1983. So this is now 1997, 14 years later. So Rick uh, um, actually applies and does a phone, an interview on the phone, and things are looking great. When we even sell our home, we're ready to move to Texas. Everything is looking like that's our part, our time to be a part of the mini KCM, and that's our part to be a part of movies. So we're doing this. We're you know we're excited because we have faith. And we're dreamers, and we're believing. So we are like, okay, you know, we're gonna, we're, we're excited for this. And then he gets a phone call that they are closing the movie department. They are, they're not doing it anymore. No they're gonna focus on other things. They're done with the movie department. So we're like, okay, okay, what do we do here? We move in with his parents, and then we seek the Lord. Okay, Lord, what are we? What do we do? You know, it looked like everything was going that way. Okay, so then we just keep doing what we're doing. We end up buying, then we bought a town home. We moved into the town home. And then Rallies for Christ was formed. Rick worked in Hollywood. The kids are getting bigger. We're starting to do things with the ministry. And then in 2009, God instructs us to make the first movie, The Rally. And oh, before that time, we're, uh, we're helping Kenneth Copeland Ministry with the youth department, with Jeremy Pearsons. We're helping the youth. Okay, we thought, okay, you know, that's our part, that our desire to be a part of Kenneth Copeland Ministries will work with the youth. Okay. But then in 2009, this is where it happens. The Lord instructs us to make a movie. That's our, okay, we're, we're ministers and we're filmmakers. Okay, we make the movie. Then, like Rick shared that story, 
Kenneth Copeland is, we didn't, this is at the end of everything. We're already, we're doing everything. We have everything going for the movie, but we need a character. See, we're still making the movie. You know, we're working on the movie, but we have one character that needs to, we need to fill in that part. And that was Kenneth Copeland that Rick shared that story. So what I'm saying is, this is 26 years later from 1983. Now, did we lose heart? No. no. Did, did the enemy ever come to us and tell us, like, oh, you're never going to be a part of that ministry? Yes. Did it seem like it was a far reach? Yes. But we had a word. I had a scripture that I used concerning Hollywood and our part with KCM Ministries. But it's the Lord that dropped that in us. I wasn't looking for... Um, Looking, I wasn't looking to work in Hollywood, us. I wasn't looking to be a part of KCM Ministries. It's the Spirit of God that dropped that within us and gave us the Word. And it's up to us. Again, we have to choose to be in faith. We have to choose complete trust and confidence in someone or something, and it's the Word that we had complete confidence in. So you, you can't lose heart. 26 later, that, that fulfillment came but it was the word that we stood on, no matter what. We, you can't get tired, you can't get weary. And the word is for everything, for health. Yes. As, you know, I think back, many doctor, many doctor visits that I went to, that the doctors tried to say things to me, but I find a scripture. And I do not lose heart from everything. From one time my iron was low. And I didn't even have symptoms of that, though. It showed in my blood work. I'm thinking, wow, I don't feel like my iron's low. Yeah, we want to take you to get tested because your iron's so low, you might have fibroids and this and that. And, and I'm like, okay, well, are you tired and this and that? I'm going, no. And so I do. I, take, I went and took tests, and I, I knew because I have a word from the Lord. Yeah. Nothing will come up, and nothing came up. Yeah. And, I, and they said, well, you need more iron. I said, okay, I'll eat more iron. So I ate more iron, and my, my blood work, never a thing again. But I have to choose. I can say, I can say, if they tell me my, my iron's low, and maybe you have fibroids, I can say, oh, maybe I do. Right, right, right. Oh, is that what you see? Oh, okay. And then I could just tell everybody, you know what the doctor said? I'm low on iron, and I have fibroids. I have to choose. It's a choice. But I choose to have complete trust in the Word of God. That was one area. And then there was another area. Women's have, women, you have, you, it's important you go get your mammogram test every year. Then they want me to come back. We might have seen something. And I said, okay, but no. Not, I went to John chapter 15, verse 3. When you're connected to the vine, which is Jesus, he has made you clean. Yeah. His word says you are now clean because the word I've spoken, because you're connected to me, I and you and you and me. You are now clean. So that is my scripture for every doctor appointment I go to. I am now clean to the word. So it's complete trust and confidence in the word. That's how you win. That's how you win. Every time I see a commercial on TV and there's, there's so many medication for everything, and I feel like saying, people, it's in the word. Jesus bore it for us. Jesus bore everything. Do you know, did you know that May is the month of, um, it's the month of mental wellness, mental awareness month, mental awareness month in May. And it says, this is what they emphasize for your body, for your mind, for your mind, for body. And I'm thinking, well, they're missing something. For your spirit, your spirit. Once you receive Jesus in your spirit, you can knock out everything else. Your mind and your body have to line up. So we have the goods. We have the goods. And it's the word of God that's good. It's medicine. It's life. It's living. So I want to encourage you. I don't want to, I know I'm excited to hear the, tonight's message. I know we're going to continue in faith. And I know you heard a lot. But if I can say anything that you have to have complete trust and confidence in the word. It'll get you through everything. It has. It has got us through health, protection, finance. It has got us through every single thing. 
in our life. There's been victory after victory. Now it's going to take faith for this new yeah. rally ministry. Yeah. All the things you saw, it's going to take faith. Yeah. 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 But it's a choice. Right. Uh, are we up for the task? Yeah. We're not alone. Yeah. The greater one lives within us. Yeah. We have to get the job done. Yeah. We have to get this job done. You know why it's so important that we have faith? For vict and victory in every area? You know why? So we can get the job done. Yeah. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. When Jesus left, he said, he said, told us what to do. And it's so important that we stay strong and we're healthy, we're strong, that we're ready to get the job done. Because think about it, things that try to hold you up, things that try to stop you, sickness, money, different issues in life, all that is to stop us from doing the Great Commission. It is. It's just sidetracking. It's a sidetrack to get us off, to get our mind over here and not over here. So we need to make sure everything is taken care of. Family, spirit, soul, body, family, your life, everything that concerns you to, to go forward, to get it, have it all lined up so we can do the job. So we can get it done. Get it done. Victory after victory. There's, that's, that's what faith in God's word gets you. That's your result. That's what it gets you. And I know you guys got full this morning. Yeah. Weren't those stories great with Rick sharing? Oh. It takes me back. It takes me back, and it just makes me even want to believe more. For more and for more. I'm ready to take the studio in Hollywood. I'm ready to film films in Hollywood. And I'm ready to teach people in Hollywood what we know. What we know, that they can have victory in every area of their life. Amen.